Facebook Live, Facebook Live, we have arrived. One more time, y'all, let's, uh, let's get it in. Uh-oh, let me fix that. Conference recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is uh, a watchman, uh, Derek Israel, also known as Pastor Derek on the um, evening scripture study. Uh, Zeno. Uh, um, but um, this is um, this is Watchman Derek Israel, also known as Pastor Derek, on the evening scripture study on his first day. Um, Leslie Sutton, Kimyana, on his first day in uh, December 2021. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Good as you in here, Mother Katie and uh, Leslie Sutton. Uh, so, uh, Zeno up in here. Good to see you, young lady. Um, Yakuwan and Al Mal. Uh, Koala, Mother Joyce, Coles. Coles is up in here as well. Akita, I see you up in here. Hallelujah. Y'all, let's dive. Let's dive in this word. Um, let's go to uh Let me think how I want to teach this. Um, let's go to uh John <coughs> Yakanan. Um Probably what I want. Okay, we're gonna get. Okay, we'll we'll start at a twenty four and twenty. Um, twenty one. Forget it. Twenty one. Beverly, good to see you on. Beverly, good to see you on. Listen to this. Yakuan 4.21. Look what this says. It says, uh, Yahusha said unto her, Quentin, good to see you on, man. Yahusha, did I pray? If I did, it didn't. I'm going to do it again if I didn't. Let's pray. Spirit of the Most High, we love you and thank you for this opportunity coming for you. Humble to know how we're in your presence because we love you and we need you. We're acknowledging you. Continue to strengthen your children. We're casting our cares upon you, knowing that you care. Um, we need you. Send a relevant word in Yahushua's name. We only pray. Hallelujah. And Amon. Thank you, Kim Yana. Brianna, good to see you all as well. <clears throat> Um, here we go, y'all. Listen to this. It says, Yahusha said on the her, Barbara, good to see you on. Yahusha said on the her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Yahudim. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in Ruah and in truth. For, for, um, for the Father seeketh such uh, to worship him. Yah is a Ruah, and they that worship him must worship him in Ruah and in truth. Um, <clears throat> okay, we probably get a little deep today. We'll see what Yah say. Completely up to him. I'm here. I'm here for him to speak. So here we go. Listen. Samaritan woman just got her mind blown. 
as he disclosed the anointing on his life and or who he is. Actually both, right? And um, Mark, Logan, good to see you on. And so she was more reminiscing on how the forefathers, or talking about present day stuff, but how the forefathers, you know, worshipped in this mountain. Excuse me, y'all. How, um, you know, the designated place of worship, right? And the Mashiach was more explaining than her that this going the time is coming, right? The words it's not going to be about Jerusalem or the Mount. That's not what it's going to be about. And then he was letting them know that true salvation is, you know, of Yasharel in the past, right? Chalet, good to see you on. <clears throat> but um, he was letting it be known that it's not going to be geographical like that, right? And then he let her know that, you know, you worship, but you really don't know what you worship. Now, that's applicable to what the Most High Prophet would have me say today. Because we have a lot of people that's worshiping him. But they really, but they're really not. They just think they are. And that's that's a mind sobering concept in and of itself. And you'd be surprised how many people really believe they worship in him and they're really not. And so he said, You worship and you do not know what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Yahudim. And he was Yahudim himself. He was the seed of Abraham, right? And so he's saying, we know what we worship. You think you do, but you really don't. But he was taking it deeper than that. He was taking it to another level. Because then he said in the 23rd verse, he said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper, see you got people that's worship." worshiping but they're really not true worshipers listen he said but the hour cometh and now is he's jumping off like right now now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in ruah in, 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 in spirit and in truth right the time is for the true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Interesting. Right? Then he got deeper and said, Yah is the Ruah. Elohim is, is a Ruah. He's a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Are you with me? Which is so deep. Let me get some help right quick. Let's go to Romans. We're going to come back to here though. But let's go to Romans. Romans 12 and 1. Beseech means to beg, right? So. So Paul is begging here. Look what he says. Shaul is his real name, but Paul is, is begging here, right? He said, I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yah, that you present your body a living sacrifice. That's what we're doing. We're presenting ourselves a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto Yah, which is your reasonable service. Uh, let me read it in the NIV. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of Yah's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Yah. This is your true and proper worship. How many of y'all know what worship is? People think worshiping Yah is singing to him. People think that worshiping Yah is pr to praise him, singing praises to him. They really believe that. 
But that's not what it is. No. To describe what it really is, looking at Romans 12 and 1, it says, I'm begging you, therefore, by the mercy of Yah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy except on Riyah. And that's your reasonable worship. That just told you what worship is. Yeah, King James say your reasonable service, but it's actually your reasonable worship. Because <clears throat> worship is to bow down to his word. And bowing down to his word is not a physical posture. It can, it, it can include a physical posture, but it is not a physical posture. That's not what it is. Y'all with me? To present your body a living sacrifice. Um, <laughs> from a theological position, right? You got people. I said it before, but you got people that celebrates Yahushua or the Messiah. Who they call Jesus. Some people do. They talk about his death, burial, and resurrection. Not realizing, according to Romans, the sixth chapter, is your death, burial, and resurrection too. When you accept him, you die to who you are to rise up to walk in the newness of life. From a more of a Catholicized, uh, Jesus did everything for me state of mind, they pass the responsibility to him. But he's the one that said, if you don't suffer with me, you won't reign with me. That's involving us. Oh, we are super involved. The wages of sin is death. We experience the death while we're living. We're baptized into his death while we're living. We're baptized into his death while we're living, giving us the state of mind and the posture of walking away from our sinful nature and doing exactly what he tells us to do. And that's the true worship. So we have a state of mind that we're presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. I didn't go out living a sinful life with my body today. I didn't go out and do me. I just came from doing what he wanted me to do. I need, to, I need to go to bed doing what he want me to do. I need to wake up in the middle of the night and pray if he tell me to get up and pray. Because I'm presenting my body a living sacrifice. That's the true worship. It's not hollering hallelujah. Y'all keep remembering that he said they draw nigh unto me with their mouth. Honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There's people that are still listening to me now. Literally. That are still contemplating on whether or not they're going to become a true worshiper. They still haven't made up their mind. Because it, it costs you. You walk, you walk in, you were baptized into his death to rise up to walk in the newness of life. You're walking according to what Yah tell you to do. What you read, what he revealed to you from his word. He's, he's ordering your footsteps. And you, when what you were supposed to do was present your body a living sacrifice so he can tell you what to do. You're presenting your body a living sacrifice and, and, it, and you present yourself, you're holy. Holy, what that mean? H holy is the attributes of Yah will now be <clears throat> emulated through your body. You're presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy, and is acceptable on the Yah. Holy and pleasing to Yah. Yah can look at you. You're, you're, he's pleased with you because you're walking in his ruah. You're walking in his spirit. You're living by what he say. You obey what he say. That's pleasing to him. It's acceptable. I approve of this, right? Holy and acceptable for Yah, and it's it's your 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 true worship. That's what worship is. Yeah. Back to 
Yakana. Four. So the Messiah. I, I won't even go back like that. I'm just gonna hit um twenty-three. Keisha, always a pleasure seeing you. Always. Young lady, you be brew. Listen. Twenty-third verse. Yakana four. Twenty-three. But the hour cometh. And now is. We we not we not talking future no more. Now is, right? Galatians 4 and 4. When the fullness of time was come, Yah sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Yeah. This is the time. This is when the hour came. The hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers, the true. The um, people that really worship him, and those of you that are still making up your mind whether you're going to worship him or not, but Tia, always a pleasure, young lady. This, but the but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers, true, he's insinuating that people that have been worshiping him in the past wasn't really worshiping him. No, no, that's not what they was doing. That's what they thought they was doing. But he's breaking the news to them. That the hour cometh and it now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So true worship is the adoration, adoring him to the point that you obey him like. You walk in the Ruah. Notice he is the Ruah. He's the spirit. That's what he is. And we agree with the spirit. That's worship. You know how, uh, uh, I don't know if y'all ever watched the Raiders fans, right? Especially when they was in Oakland. It was like a religion. Them jokers paint up, paint their face, and got on all the clothes. And, and man, they was faithful too. That's worship. Because they obeyed the Raiders. They admired the Raiders to the point they started looking like them, dressing like them, wearing the jerseys, buying all the stuff, a, a season ticket holder. They they was all in. They, they Their money is involved. Their time is involved. How they dress was involved. Them jokers. Are, okay, yeah, you worship the Lakers. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? You know, you got these idols, and you got these ball players, these idols, these singers, these rap people idolize them. Whatever they do, they do. Whatever the rapper or the singer or the ball team or the whatever they do, you all in. Are you with me? That's really. I'm, I'm not talking about bumping your. Oh yeah, I'm a Lakers fan. You you can't even say who the players are. You ain't no you ain't no worshiper of the Lakers. Now, when you're a worshiper, you you know what it is. You know who doing what, stats and everything. And, and bet not nobody say nothing bad about him because now you're ready to fight. That's a true worshiper. Not this verbal stuff. So, <clears throat> true worship then, listen, is required now. That's what this is saying. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father, Spirit, and truth. <laughs> Listen, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. He's seeking people that are all in. And that separates the sheep from the goats. That separates those that really have Yah and those that have a have a form of having Yah. It's a difference. A true worshiper is hungry and thirsting for righteousness, and he promised they shall be filled because they're really seeking him. They're a true worshiper. They're mimicking him. They're studying his word. And they're not studying it like the Greek do for knowledge. Yahudim, they're looking for a sign. Greeks look for knowledge. They want to be smart. Ulterior motives. True worshipers is worshiping him because they love him. 
And when you love them, you go through a transformation process. And when you don't, you won't. Those that think they love Yah will get to know him. Let me explain something to you. They'll get to know him. But they're going to find something that they don't love about him. Or they're going to find something that they're not willing to do for him. That's how it really works. You got people that start following him, but when they really learn the level and they really get to know him, some people come to him and they end up not liking him. Let me give you an example. When the, when the rich young ruler came to him, he ran to him and everything. Verbally worshipped him too. He did. And he wanted to know what would it take for him to be saved? And the Messiah talked more. Listen how holy he looked. He talked to him from more of a religious standpoint. Listen to this. From a religious standpoint, he gave him the last six commandments. And the last six commandments was based on how you treat your brother. Straight up. And whether you know it or not, that's still not worship. It isn't. It looks like. You couldn't look more. It couldn't look more like worship. Because the average person believes worship is singing and praising him. Giving him verbal props. That's what the average person thinks. So if you ever run across someone like the rich young ruler that ran to him fell down before him, bowing down. You say, wait a minute, that looked like the real thing right there. Worship, you know how we do, we sang and bow down. That's what he did. Yeah. He asked a question. The most High answered him according to a high profile religious cat. You know, don't defraud your brother, sister, be a bear false witness, don't... Don't be committing adultery and fornication. You know, don't steal from them. All the natural stuff. Honor your mother and father. Great dude. Look like, whoa, is that worship? But the conversation didn't stop right there. He said, man, I've been doing this since my youth. He was carnal and didn't even know it. Because <laughs> he was a good dude. And then, I believe it was Mark that described the Mashiach loved him. Now we're on a whole nother level now. The love of the Ruach kicked in and he said, sell all you got. Give it to the poor. And follow me. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Because that's true worship. Because true worship is doing what he say do. Presenting your body a living sacrifice, right? I present myself to Yah. And you can't present it any kind of way. It's got to be holy. Which is pleasing in his sight. Mm -hmm. And that's your true worship. Well, he didn't have that. He didn't have it. He walked away sad. Because true worship is you presenting yourself a living sacrifice. See, the Mashiach became our sacrifice on the tree. But he told us to take up your tree, your torture stake, and follow me. Because you the sacrifice too. That's why Shaul was begging. And I beseech you by the mercies of Yah that you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy Kadesh. And it's pleasing. In Yah's sight. And that's your real true worship. So here we're looking at it. And, and he's saying in the 23rd verse. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father. Listen, only the true worshipers. Anyone listen to me right now? The word come and will expose you to you. 
First thing, what happens to us, let me explain something to you. When you're seeking him and you're getting to know him, because a lot of, you know, I'm still in a lot of retrospects still getting to know him as well. So don't feel offended if you're still getting to know him, right? But th those of us that's fresh at it, fresher or whatever, right? We're getting to know him. And the first thing we do a lot of times is when the word rub us the wrong way, we, we will not accept the fact that we're rubbed the wrong way because we're wrong. We don't like to look at it like that. We let, we got to look we got we rather look at it like the ministry is wrong, or the preacher is wrong, and some is brave enough to even be like Yah's wrong. <laughs> but but because they you know their heart led them to believe that they're really a true worshiper. But the truth of the matter, when those things happen, you're proving that you're not a true worshiper. If Yah tell me to do something. And I'm not willing to do it. I'll get offended in the flesh. You get offended because you thought you would obey him. And you will not allow yourself to be guilty of not willing to obey him. So you rather blame him or the ministry or Yah or this must be a misprint in the Bible. Anything to deliver your wicked nature. Can I tell y'all the truth today? When you find out you're not a true worshiper, listen. 23rd verse says, but the hour cometh, and now is, all that other stuff is out the window. He's not winking at it. you either going to prove to be a true worshiper, or you're going to prove that you're not. And those that sit up under true word, and not, they're not being transformed into his image. If you're not being transformed into his image, then you're not a true worshiper. Because true worship is to worship him to the point that you bow down to him and you do whatever he tells you to do. And the right heart that's that's made into a worshiper is one that's hungering and thirsting after righteousness. One that really love him for real. So he can tell you, you should be faithful to a true ministry. Yeah. The, the attributes of the word, listen, transforms his children into his image. If you want to, if you want to hear some descriptions of his children, they hear his voice and obey it. You want to hear what true worship? I'm telling, I'm describing you a true worshiper. You do have some true worshipers, but it costs you. You ain't gonna miss no uh, Laker game, no Warrior game, no Raider game. No, no, no. No uh, concert of your favorite artist and all. You know, true worshipers is on it. I'm telling you. Well, true worshipers that 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 obey Yah, that are with Yah, you can you can look at them and see. Some people call true worshipers fanatics. <laughs> yeah, just the object of your worship. Whomever or whatever is the object of your worship, all you got to do is look at somebody. You ain't got to say nothing to them. Ooh, if that ain't a Piston fan, ooh, you, you sure love the I show 49er fan. You seen them, Joe? They red and gold. They look, oh, my goodness. Are you with me? I'm a dude that just got on his hat. I'm not a Jordan fan like that. I mean, man, appreciate what he did, though. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna front. But you don't. Every time you see me, you don't see no Michael Jordan hat on. I be wearing. What is I go for, for the color of the hat. I ain't tripping on none of them. Tell you, <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to match a little bit. You know what I mean? Listen. So you can tell when someone that's around y'all, but they're not really with him, because the word makes them mad. And then they'll conclude it can't be true because they mad. They rubbed the wrong way. You're not a worshiper. Not a true listen. But the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father. In spirit and in truth. That's the only way to worship because he is a Ruah, the spirit. He is the truth. 
The Mashiach said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. If you ain't down with the, his spirit, if you're not down with truth, then you ain't down with him, and you're not worshiping him. You fall into more of a category to your banks. Good to see you. But you fall more into a category of a religious person. They draw nigh on him uh, with their mouth and honor him with their lips, with their heart, their lifestyle far from him. This is some commandments off stone type stuff I'm talking about. This is, this is the conclusion of the matter. We're no longer the schoolmaster. We got the real thing. And, and, and the real thing, the completion, is bringing the word to you, right? The word has been being brought. The word was brought to Adam. When the word showed up in the garden, he ran from it because he was going against it. He already sinned. He already brought damnation and death on the scene. So when the word came, he ran from it. But when it came down 75 generations to be born, that's the, t the, that's the time that now is when the true worshipers, now that we went through shadows and types, we done went through uh, shadows, you know, fish days, uh, fish days, feast days. We done went through f feast days and we, we, done, we done went through tabernacles and we went through all that to lead us to the end of the law. Because the Mashiach, the word coming flesh is the end of the law to them that believe. To the Yahudim first and also to the Greek, to the Goy, to the Gentile. But the hour has come and now is when the true worshiper, now I have a straight relationship with. I can't front now. Ain't no form of Yahweh that's going to work now. You got folks that got it, but it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers. Remember he said anyone came before me was a thief and a robber. Y'all ever figured that out yet? It's talking about this. 23rd verse. It's talking about everyone that came before represented like Abraham represented faith. But but the, the true faith man wasn't him. He was a shadow of the true faith. The true faith was the Mashiach when the word was made flesh. I'm just telling you. It all aimed to the Mashiach coming. So now true worshipers present their bodies a living sacrifice. That's what a true worshiper does. It presents their body a living sacrifice, holy, and that's pleasing in the eyes of eyesight. And that's their true worship. That's what true worship is. When I give myself away, you know what the song said, I give myself away so you can use me. It ain't about um, what I want to do. You're not a true worshiper. You're not worshiping him. You're worshiping yourself because everybody got an object of worship. Some people worship money straight out. Yeah, because they worship themselves. And money give you power to be able to worship yourself better. That's why the Bible says you can't serve uh, 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 two masters. You can't serve Yah and money. Yeah, money answers in all things. Folks, folks want to, folks want to see their way, and they don't want to have to have. They don't have to pray. You know what I mean? I pay my way. You know what I mean? I got money, man. <laughs> but the hour cometh, and now is. Listen, right now, right now. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Not in song and dance. Not crying and falling on the floor. Ooh, they worship. They a good worship. Ooh, they they can sing. They a good worship leader. They ain't never, they, you got folks that's leading worship, ain't never worshiped him a day in their life. And you got to come to him to see. You got to come to him. You, you can't hide behind beards and all that stuff. You got to come to him and see. <laughs> yeah. You got you to gotta meet the word to see if you the type that you shouldn't be, you know, laid up with them, but you still is. You shouldn't be talking like that, but you still is. You should, you should be forgiving, but you don't. <clears throat> yeah. You should be willing to give your life to the most high. And some people, no, I'm not doing that. It's sad when you don't do that. Like say, truth come. Because you got to worship in spirit and truth. 
he's sending me to tell you that. Because you got a lot of people that are religious and they never worshipped him a day in their life. And I'm being honest with you. There's people that's, that listens to me, that hear how I preach, what I preach, whatever it is, and they're not worshipping him. And they never have. Because because the true worship will find out as they read, you know, the, the Bible in, in Deuteronomy says, Curses every man that confirm, if not all the words of this law, to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. That's a shadow of really hiding the word in your heart that you might not sin against it. I'll tell you the truth. That's that. Look, everyone has followed him for real. They go through a transformation process back to uh, Romans 12. And the reason why they're going through a transformation process, because as he gives the word, that word has creation power, transformation power transforming, creating the right clean heart in you. That's what it's doing from a wicked dark heart, from a deceitful dark heart. The word come, I hid thy word if I hid in my heart. When it's in your heart, it will transform you and you begin to change. You got some folks that sit in front of the word, they're not changing because they're not a worshiper. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. <clears throat> Everyone that belonged to him, Myers, good to see Mayors, good to see you on uh, uh, design. Everyone that worship Yah, they admire him to the point of fanatic. Oh. Word come, you do what it say. That's a true worshiper. If you don't do it, it. <clears throat> Whatever your team is, if you got the money, you're going to buy the season tickets. You're going to buy the jacket, the hat, the shoes. You know they stand you to study them because you're so fanatic. Yeah. That word of I hit in, in, in my heart. If the word get in me, it's going to recreate me. If it's not in you, you ain't. it ain't going to recreate nothing. You ain't going through a mind renewal process because if we would have kept reading... He was beseeching them and begging them by the mercy of Yah that they present their bodies a living uh, sacrifice, holy, which is pleasing unto Yah, and it's their reasonable worship. And then it said, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What renews your mind? The worship of the word. <laughs> when you worship the word, it's going to renew your mind. It's going to transform. I'm telling you the truth. When you're not being transformed, it's because you're not a worshiper. Can I tell you the truth? We don't have time for me to be playing. Nah, man, we need. <laughs> it's the truth. So the hour cometh, but it's right now. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is not looking for people that talk a good one. Um, I can get deeper, but let me say this too. Let me say that the Spirit that 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 that, that uh, the secret of Yah's is 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 with is with is with His children. The secret of Yah is with the righteous, right? They, we know a secret. Like I said, He said. Give not that which is holy on the dogs, neither cast thy pearls before swine. Because even if we do it anyway, we just going to get attacked, he said. That's all he was saying in, 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 in uh, 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 Matthews, the seventh chapter. He said that if you give what is holy on the dogs, they're going to get mad at you, they're going to hate you, and they're going to attack you. So, so in other words, if he told you not to do it, please understand he's not going to do it. I want you to get this revelation. If he told you not to do it, he not going to do it. So you can do it. See, one planet, another water, but it's got to get an increase. If you give something holy onto a dog, spirit, spiritual dog, he not going to get an increase. But what is going to happen is you're going to get your head tore off because they're going to get at you. <laughs> they're going to scratch your eyes out. Yeah, you're going you to gain an enemy. I gain enemies. All enemies don't say nothing. They don't, you know, you gain enemy, don't even know somebody been hating you forever just by listening to somebody preach. 
Oh, it's the truth. He said, at least they hate you and they turn to rip you to shreds. That's what it said. So you're the one going to be hated on and you're the one going to get attacked because you're giving the word to somebody that don't want it. Oh, that's the truth anyhow. But he ain't going to get an increase. They're not going to change. You can preach it till you blue in the face. There's people that has been listening to me teach or even other preachers that teach so-called truth. And they're not changing because they're not a worshiper. They're not, they're not going to do it. They just hang out because they're like, like religious or something. But they're not going to do it. I've been doing this a long time, so I know people, the word comes, they just don't change. They're, they're, they're not going to do it. <laughs> but the hour coming to now is when the true worshipers, that's a whole nother level now. When the true worship shall worship the, the, the Abba, worship Abba and Ruah and in, in truth. In, in, in spirit and in truth, right? And that happens because the Father seeking such to worship him. What he's looking for is true worshipers at this point. Period. Whether we know it or not. And because we see a whole bunch of people that have a form of it, and he didn't kill them immediately, that's, what, that's why in Ecclesiastes it said, uh, because the judgment of Yah isn't executed uh, speedily or swiftly or immediately and set in the heart of man to do wicked. People think they're getting away with what they do. You don't get away with that. But people is blind. That wicked heart of man will have you. <laughs> it's so sad. I deal with people that I know that ain't right, but I try to help them. But they don't, they don't know nothing about that. They don't know nothing about They don't even know they're being judged. When the love of Yah is poured on you and you turn around thinking you slick and hustling and uh, you're going to get judged. You're going to get. If people only knew why some of the things that happened to them be happening. It's because they spit in your face. They don't look at it like that, but that's exactly what it is. And they get judged. And there's a judgment on earth, but it's also when you leave here, it's the ultimate judgment. But when you're not a true worshiper. So the father is disclosing to us, right? That his true desire is that the true worshipers worship. And what true worshipers are doing is they're presenting themselves. Go do this. Go do that. Go get this to them. Get them a ride. Pray with them. Ask who need help. Now go pray, go fast. And it's far from religious camps. That stuff is can be diabolical, man. We need, listen, oh my, do we need it? We need, I need, I know what I need. I know I got to sit in here with y'all and be willing to do whatever you tell me to do. And nine times out of ten, what he tell me to do, I don't want to do. This is not, it's the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profits nothing. He ain't doing this for my flesh. He's rescuing me from my flesh. Did y'all get that? Everyone that's a true worshiper know that they're being rescued from their flesh. So their flesh is steaming mad. Lonely or not. Broke or not, happy or not, obey what he say. And when you're unhappy, it's in your flesh. And he he's quick to tell your flesh, no. No. <laughs> no. And when you fleshly, you're going to leave him. <laughs> because he's going to get your flesh. And you fleshly. If you carnal and the word keep beating down your flesh and you carnal and you fleshly, ah, oh, you're going to leave him. From a watchman standpoint of view, right? I preach whatever he had me to preach. And I already can see who going to be here and who not. That's heartbreaking. 
when you're not a true worshiper, you do not submit to what he's saying. Straight up. He told, I'm not going to leave y'all out. Those of you on the line, I heard it. Yeah, the enemy ain't stopping nothing. I'm calling y'all right back right now. Here we go. Boo yeah. I'm not leaving y'all. Hello. Please enter your six digit conference code. Welcome to free conference calling. We will now connect you to your call. Oh, it's true. Right. It's still true. I hope y'all can still hear me. I called y'all back. Let me look. Y'all on, I know, but just courtesy look. Yep, y'all still, y'all still, I pray you can hear me. I pray you still can hear me. Yeah, Tia, you got to constantly mortify the deeds of the flesh. That's why we can't afford Catholicism and we can't afford to be under the law, not to be a true worshiper. And that's why I'm on it so hard. And I'm going to be on it. I ain't stopping. I ain't losing nobody to that. <laughs> No, I ain't gonna not on my watch. But um is 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 it's his word that was disrespected by Adam being baptized inside of us. And what we gotta do is bow down to it in the Ruah. Our salvation come from the Ruah. From having a relationship in his, in, the, in the Ruah's spirit. The only way you can really worship Yah is in spirit. He is not tripping off carnal rituals. I just got to keep teaching until we learn it. <laughs> That's not what he's into. He ain't even into the people that kept him. He, he the one that, he started destroying Yasharel. He was killing them. He straight was killing them. And beating them down and had them go from captivity to captivity to captivity. Shouldn't that tell you that he ain't into that? He wasn't even into them like that. <laughs> he's into having a true relationship with his word, walking in the Ruach because he's a spirit and he wants you to worship him in the spirit because that's what he is. This flesh is temporary. I'm trying to tell you. It's straight up a, a matter of the heart, 1,000%. It's a matter of being in love with his word. And we hide it in our heart that we might not sin against him, period. And how he get out, you know, love to know that Yah's one and to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself upon these two hang all the law and the prophets because that's really what it's about. It's about loving Yah and loving each other. Never was it about carnal commandments going camping and <laughs> you know. those were shadows and types to get a message to us because we're carnal we're natural the word was made flesh you know why because we're flesh he used parables to teach us why because we can relate with the, the farmer the soldier the athlete to get a spiritual message to you that you walk in the ruah now we go out, he do, he do, he do a parable about an athlete. Can you see all of them saying, we supposed to be athletes. Man, get out of here. No. Yasharel was good athletes. Man, get out of here, okay? You don't know what the heck you talking about. That's a point of reference to get a spiritual message to a carnal people. Feast days, festivals, tabernacle, beards, and all that, or shadows and types to get a spiritual message to you. That's it. That's why you can't be justified by it. Don't go back into that. Woo. Trying to help. <laughs> help me, Yahoo. Yahoo. I need your help. Listen. I'm not going to keep y'all. I, I like to get in and get out because I do it so much. I don't want to overdo it. To where y'all start running from, from, from. Yeah. He preached too long. Listen. I'm just trying to tell you something. Listen. So Romans 12 and 1 I'm almost done I just want to show you what worship is Worship is not clapping and dancing and, You know the church dance We do pick them up and put them down and all that It's good It's good It's good for you know You can lose some weight <laughs> Anyway Listen 
Romans 12 and 1. He's beg, beseeches to beg, right? You therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yah, is by his mercies, right? Listen to me. Listen. Okay, let me see. I still honor the feast, though. They're beautiful. All good. All good. Just as long as you're not saved by it. Just as long as you know it ain't no salvation by it. And don't preach to somebody else sinning because they don't. More in the sin, more of the sin will be that, that you do than if you don't, if you had a Mashiach. To honor any of those things, those are points of, like, you, you probably, and I know you know the word, too. So you probably can tell me what all the feast days and festivals and the new moons, what they represent. And if it's too much, you're going to put too much on it. If, if you're not rightly divided right, those were shadows and time, which is an easy lesson, too. The word is playing on it. But it, it was leading you to the coming of the Mashiach. All of it. That's all it was for. That's all it was for. Yeah, yeah. Only one. Wait, yeah, that's it. The only your whole salvation come. So then we, we don't we don't we don't start preaching that as salvation at all. Because it's not. In fact, when we start preaching it like it's salvation, now we're sinning. And the Mashiach prophets us nothing. But to Enjoy our heritage as a people. You know what I mean? Know the meaning of, you know, the Feast of Tabernacles, the tents, you know, uh to, you know, um, you know, what again, what the what the what the what the, what the tabernacle is all about, what the beard is all the oil ran down from air's beard, the rod that budded, all those have spiritual meanings. And every last one of them lead um um um, to the Mashiach, Th these wicked folks, these Luciferian, the 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 bloodline of the Nephilim, love Christmas. <laughs> yeah, they'll celebrate a a, a, a pedophile, um, murdering rapists like Christopher Columbus. They love to celebrate him, cause cause he's of the devil, and so are they. We don't touch that. You know, you don't mess with that, right? But this is the day that Yah has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I give away food because I get food. Those are big times for food to come my way. When I'm going to say no, the heck no, I ain't saying no. Here, take this food. <laughs> uh, you, you, your baby need a toy? Take that. I'm not wrapping it. It ain't no Merry Christmas. I'm not I'm not celebrating Tammuz, his birthday. And I, don't, I ain't messing with none of them. Listen. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Romans 12 and 1. I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of Yah, that you present your body a living sacrifice. That you present your body a living sacrifice. Right? Holy, and it's pleasing to Yah, which is your reasonable worship. You want to know? You want to learn how to worship Yah? Do what he say. You're showing awe of him. That you do what he say. That's true worship. You come in talking about Oh, Michael Jordan, I just worship you. And they look at you and say, well, why you got on a Celtics, a Celtics uh, uniform? And, and you're a season ticket holder of the Celtics, and you up in here <laughs> telling me you worship who? Dude, who you playing with? You in Larry Bird face. You got Larry Bird tattooed on your arm talking about, oh, Jordan, I just worship. No, you worship Larry Bird and the Celtics. Get out of here with that. What you talking about? But to to be a worshiper, to be a worshiper of Yah, is you adore him to the point that you obey him. And those of us that understand that the word was made flesh, the object of our worship wasn't the body. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 16 say, we don't know each other after flesh no more. Neither do we know the Mashiach after the flesh no more because the flesh already did his job and was back to the word. <laughs> Never was about him as a man. It was about him coming as the object of his rescue, which was man. So the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. But when the flesh was here, he said, man, why are you calling me good? Don't do that. He didn't say don't do that. I don't want to stretch it. But he definitely asked him, why did you do that? Are you trying to worship me as a man? Then you got the game twisted. I'm reconciling you back with the word. And that's what it's all about.
He can reconcile back to the word. And whoever is a true worshiper of the word, that's exactly what they're going to do. The word. They're going to worship Yah. Because Yah, in the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah. The word was Yah. When Adam said in the beginning, it was the word walking in the garden. It was the voice of Yah, the word said. And if you're a worshiper of Yah, you're, you're a worshiper of his voice. You're a worshiper of his of what he tells you to do. I'm just trying to let you know. Uh, it's in Genesis, the third chapter. You want me to read it? Uh, the voice of Yah. And then I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I'm just trying to help us get closer in being a, a worshiper uh, to the Most High. It's in Genesis. It's in Genesis, the third chapter. Oh, y'all, look. Let me just show you. Let me show you. Ah, eighth verse. Uh, then the man and his wife, three and eight, y'all. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of Yar Elohim as he walked in the garden. Let's let's get a better. Uh, I, I, you, I know you got your see for your Hallelujah scriptures, or you can just look it up. Or you can do blue, no, what is it? Bible Hub. It'll tell you, and I don't feel like doing it right now. Y'all can do it, but let's do this. Three and eight, y'all. It says, and they heard the voice of Yah. You heard that? And they heard the voice of uh, of Yah Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It was the voice of Yah, because Yah is the voice. Yah is the word. Everything he created, notice, his Ruah moved across the face of the deep, and he said, let there be everything he made. He starts speaking it into, into existence, because he is the word. In the beginning, it was the word. The word was Yah. The word was Yah. Again, John 1 and 1. So this whole thing was about being reconciled back to the word. And who was going to do it? The seed of the woman that would bruise the head of the serpent. And his head would bruise his heel. He was bruised on the on that torture stake. But he crushed his head, his whole uh, kingdom. He smashed it so we could be set free. And that's why uh, the veil in the temple was ripped in twain, in, in half, from the top to the bottom. Yeah. So. Oh, about, don't worship me as a man. I thought she said, he said, don't worship me as a man. Okay. What he was saying was, you oh, you wanted that scripture? I, if you want me to grab it, I will. I didn't know that's what you're talking about. I apologize. Uh, let's look at it. Luke. Um, uh, 10 and 18. But look what it said. Oh, boy, I didn't want to do this. Let me do it. It's still, uh, it, it's Mark 10 and 18. I apologize, y'all. I am a little tired, but I'm okay. Sometimes I don't be, but right now I'm okay. I'm okay. Anyway, where am I? Let me see what I'm doing. Ain't no telling. Pay attention, Derek, man. Tell me I did it right. Oh, yeah, he did come lightweight, tell him, like like I said. But anyway, I'll just read it, and then we're going to get ready to get out of here, okay? We'll take it up. We'll take it up. Um, uh, okay, I'm, NIV, I don't know what y'all want, but NIV, I guess. Anyway, uh, Mark 10, 17, it said, And as Yahushua started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he he, he asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, why do you call me good? No one is good except Yah. Yeah, so he said, don't call me that. And, and from a theological revelation standpoint, he, he never, it, it, it's the spirit of quickness. The flesh profits nothing. He, he's, he wasn't handing his glory to a man. And he didn't want him to get the wrong theology, like worship me as a man. No, no. I'm aiming you back to the Ruach. This, him dying on a tree was our reconciliation back to the word, which, which, which is our creator. The voice that was walking in the garden that they ran from because they had sin. Them in the word wasn't cool no more like that. Yeah, you got me. 
Keep digging. Keep digging like you do, though. I love that. You're a, a studier. In quietness is kept. I'll be looking, looking out for you, even when you don't know I do. I'll be praying for you and looking out for you. And now I'm looking out for you. Because it's about that time. That's just me as a watchman. Don't don't trip. True worshipers, y'all. I'm finna get out of here, y'all. True worshipers. Uh, the Most High wants wants the time is now, right? Uh, but the hour but the hour cometh, and now is when true worship worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. One hundred straight up, and the and the Father seeketh such to worship Him. That's what you're looking for. True worship. People that got, mm -mm, I ain't doing. You, you know how many people? You know how many people? People that listen to me now, they, I ain't doing that. I know you're not. <laughs> I know you're not. I, I feel bad for you, but his children is gonna do everything you tell them to do. That's it. And they're the true worshipers that the fathers is seeking to worship him. The other ones, he'll deal with them when the time comes. Is that all right? I think that's all right. Let's pray, y'all. Let's pray. Spirit of the Most High, we love you and thank you for another opportunity coming for you. Homies, know how gleaming in the truth of your word and your presence. We thank you for your compassion, your love, and revelation that you continue to give us. Uh, cause us to walk in the Ruah, in the Ruah only. Hallelujah. And to worship you, not with, with our mouth, iron, uh, iron you with the, or with our lips, but our heart far from you? No. We honor you with our mouth and our heart, but our hearts is right there with you. Thy word, if we hid in our heart that we might not sin against you, continue to keep us and we be careful to give you the praise and honor now and now forever. In the master's name, Yahushua, we humbly pray. Hallelujah. And I'm on. That's the message and the lesson. I pray it was a blessing. Okay? Y'all be Baruch. I think that's it. Y'all be Baruch and Brock and Shalom. I'm gone. Y'all want to uh, talk about the lesson? You can. All y'all do is dial 302-202-1102, extension 815648. Those of you that enjoyed the lesson, feel free to push the share button. And those of you that support the ministry financially, I say thank you. May the Most High continue to Baruch you. Hallelujah. Y'all want to talk? 302-202-1102, extension 815648. Y'all be Baruch and Brock and Shalom. I'm gone. Conference recording stopped. Conference unmuted. <laughs>